<laughs> Welcome back to the Steve Nash podcast. We give you a name last week. We didn't like the name, did we? I didn't have a problem with it. You didn't. You just decided the next day that shit, and we need to change it. So we're going with like, when we started this podcast. We had an idea for a name, and then everyone said didn't really like the name, but I like the name, and now we're going back with that name. Because you know what it is, we started to listen to everyone now, and it's and that was the yeah, bad idea. We don't yeah, need your feedback. We don't sure want your feedback. We're just going to do what we want to do. Uh, so welcome to the Heads Gone podcast. That's official. So we want your nominations now for if someone has their head fall completely off. A little bit like Arteta did the other day when he started waffling on about rotating his goalkeepers. Anything like that. He is due a Keegan moment in, by the way. We want to know. Tag us in it and we can bring it up on the show. Um, Dino's joined us, all right? My head had gone for a couple of weeks, but I'm all right now. Settled down. Do you have really a, do you a glass of wine with Ten Hag after the game? I had a bottle of Madry. Can't go anywhere in Old Trafford without Madry, can you? That's true. You know what? He knocked on me. On, I was addressing the players after the game. And there was a knock at the door. Literally. Shut fuck off. I'm talking to the players. The players. And there was a guy taking pictures from the Charlton website. Well, he's taking pictures. He was videoing it, but I didn't know. It was one of them. It looked like it didn't like a cam card. It was a. Anyway, they put. So I'm chatting to the players. Not <laughs> you get them, you know, today. Yeah, I hate them. Just... Getting... <laughs> <laughs> you cam card. Yeah, no. It didn't look like a cam card. Not since 1994. <laughs> but what I'm seeing. Look at the size seeing, of them. What I'm saying is, I hate it when you do these team talks and it's like film because it always looks. You, like, like he knows what I'm like. I'm quite emotional and quite. And it always looks staged. But anyway, so knock at the door, and, and it was it was within five minutes of the game, and it was Eric. He said, "Come in." So I went in. Him and Steve McLaren, and uh, Eric's other assistant, and there's all the pictures on his wall of every United manager from day dot. Um, we had a bottle of beer. He was asking, "Give me." He got me a signed Rashford shirt for for my kids, which was class. But sound fella, proper proper sound fella. Steve McLaren was in there. And he, <laughs> he was doing the. He had the. <laughs> He had the Dutch accent because he was talking to the assistant. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Steve is the most lovely spell of I've stood. <laughs> I wish I could have filmed it. Remember his press conference? It was classic. The best bit, well, not the best bit, it's an incredible night. Well, we I'm gone. Anyway. No, wait, 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 wait. Did he speak to the Dutch accent that night? <laughs> not to me, but he was sat with Eric's other assistant, the Baldy fella, I forget his name now, while I was chatting Mitchell to him. And I just picked up on it and I should be listening to some great advice from like a top, top manager. You just go, lol. And it came, I said, I, I said after the game in the press comments that he's invited me into Carrington and I'm going to go and learn. And, and he didn't. I said to him, any chance I can come in? <laughs> he's not going to say no, is he? In fact, I've still not done that. So I'll I need to go. And, I need I'll to go. I'll drive Friday. you. Did you? I need to go in. And, I did that on Friday. Did you? Just yeah. blagged your way in. So Calmed. about a month ago, you said I can come and uh, observe a bit of Charlton training. And now you're saying I can't, so why? Because uh, I don't work there anymore. It's a convenient excuse, isn't it, Ash? Um, I would have enjoyed having you in as well. Do you reckon? Yeah. Do you reckon the players would have been Would you, like, would you have changed the session for someone You've seen in? some of my sessions, Ash. Yeah, that's what, well, that's what I asked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Mad that, you, know, like, you know when people come in and observe, do you think managers... Go like to the staff. We got to put something fucking good on today. Cause we're not playing five side again today. Coming, no. yeah. You know what? Players love it though, don't they? Like when someone outside comes in, you've obviously got this thing going with the pod and what. We've had people come in, we've had singers come in, actors come in. Like players actually buzz off that, don't they? We've had a couple of the boys, uh, the YouTubers and stuff like that. So um, Tom Zanetti, one of the singers, wanted to come in. I, I don't know something about it. you. Do the session and they join in. Obviously, you've got to manipulate a bit. But then at the end, when it becomes a free for all, I think it's just it's a good bit of fun, isn't it? And it allows you to show. Football fans don't see, they, they see 90 minutes on a Saturday, they see a press conference. They sometimes, if they watch England training on Sky Sports News, that's not England training, is it? That's the 10, you've done it it's with Wales, haven't you? Up, it? That's the 10 minutes warm up, like you see it with City where they're doing a tennis and stuff. It's not, the, but you don't dive behind the scenes, do you? So I think it's sometimes good to get out what, what, how you work out there. For me, that's the fascinating bit, and a little bit because I'm coaching, but I think that's always fascinating me having a peek behind the curtain like that. And I think that's why. What five does really well is obviously we have Rio, we have Ash, we have Anton, Danny Murphy. We, we have all these ex players and we mash them together with fans. So fans are going to ask questions of, of players and coaches and stuff that you're not getting on TV. Like you, you're not, you know, they're not going to stick to the BBC stuff Ash does. They're not going to stick some random knobhead like me on there to ask him bone questions. But actually, people do want to know the answers to that sometimes because you guys that have worked in a game your whole life, you've have all got this perspective where. Stuff's very normal, but if we don't know about it, that's still fascinating to us. Yeah, but then, and vice versa, that's why I've got questions for you all the time, because it's not that normal for us. 
Well, the away fan thing last week, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I could see like you had notes and stuff. Like I didn't, I didn't understand. I did some stuff like as being a player, looking at fans. I'm, I'm interested equally as much to know why. Well, we're institutionalised in football, aren't we? You leave school. You, well, you were slightly different, weren't you? you yeah, yeah, but it's the same sort of thing, stuff, really. I remember you couldn't hold them and they, on trial and they said no, didn't you? But is that public? It's because I, I was a right back. You, you was mean, a right back. You already had an established you your weight around. <laughs> <laughs> No, I actually, I was at the beginning. Actually, gave him his captaincy, his last ever game. I, I didn't realise. I knew you said, uh, that was at Bristol, right? Bristol City. I didn't realise your paths had crossed that much. In all honesty, it's weird. So we we crossed. Like I must have been maybe eighteen. I'm not sure. Whatever. On trial, you was playing for Oldham, and then we. I don't know if we played against each other, but then we came back. I went to Bristol as my last club, and then you was assistant manager. I was assistant yeah. when Lee signed you, and then obviously I yeah. was manager and at then, the end, yeah. wasn't I, for your last game, yeah. And then I, I helped you because I got myself. Suspended, didn't I? You did, yeah. We got suspended, so we was then going. He was like my assistant manager for the for the day. Play, play <laughs> well, the is it? He did <laughs> all the cool us. stuff. He did all the cool stuff. He's like mates with all the players and like left and Joe, and then let me pick the team and. Well, he got like So I'd help. I'd say like, let's not play him. It's been a shit week, and then he picked the team, and then going, I can't fucking believe it. Caught him in the canteen, I swear down. Corridor chat. Yeah, Our careers were slightly that. different. Yeah, we, we were slightly different. Slightly different. He's unbelievable for himself, didn't he? It's inspirational actually when you see the the stuff of Wales and that. But we are institutionalised. You don't get to see. I mean, I'm a, I was a season ticket holder United as a kid, so I know what it's like to still like, are, aren't you? Yeah, still am. Yeah, your whole weekend is planned around the game. What time you get into the ground? How you get in there? Getting back late at night and all that. But results, are results. That's so. To answer your question, I'm sat here now because I lost me. I lost my job. But the process behind it. We, last season we went in at Christmas. We were the club was 18th, looking at relegation, lowest it had ever been in its history. I mean, Charlton's a massive club, and you'll have played there. What a, what a club! You can't say no to that job. Unbelievable fan base. We went from 18th to 10th. We went to Old Trafford. We went toe to toe. To be fair, on the night, 10,000 fans, and then pre-season was going really, really well. We were looking at a promotion, and then everything changed sort of towards the end of pre-season. So I'm not here now. Do you bring a load of kids for as well? Yeah, I believe in it. Yeah, uh, all the clubs I've been at, I think. You've got to be good enough. You've got to be good enough. You can't throw them in when they're not ready because that's unfair on them. But yeah, well, there's a couple of 18 year olds that we threw in for the debuts in the first game of this season. I think we started the season with seven academy graduates in the, in the 11. Wow. Um, and they need time to make mistakes. And you know, you could go and sign an experienced player, or you could have an 18, 19 year old who's going to make mistakes, but they've got, they've got a big ceiling. From a you know? club, club point of view, that's, and a budget point of view, that's probably like exactly what a club wants to see as well. It's proving their academy works. There's always that connection between a fan base and any academy player, every single club that you bring them through. They always give them a little bit more time and a little bit more encouragement. And they're going to cost cock all compared to mm. you want to pull someone down from a league above to come in. They're, they're going to want a payday to do that. I think there's a, there's a real... And I'm looking to get back into management. I, I, I'm obsessed with it. I love it. The fuck I love you it. Doing? Uh, why is he Madness. in there then? <laughs> I'm putting my. Because like, after he's gonna, done 30 minutes on UFOs, yeah, no, 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 no yeah. fuck's going to take and you serious. They're going to Google you yeah, and they'll be like, do I want this guy? He believes what? <laughs> you know, you're putting, your, you're putting your, you're putting your kids' <laughs> futures on, on, on this mad industry, which it is at the moment, but I will never change it. What I mean by, like, you're five games away from, from the sack nowadays. You're five games from. A phone call to go to the Championship or the Premier League as a manager in your five games, as I found out from from the sack. But I won't change. I still won't. It sounds ridiculous that I signed a three-year contract in, in April. I still won't change what I do. You, there's decisions to be made for the future of the club to yeah, play yeah. young players to because you believe in it. Now, if you think, right, I've got five games, I'll go and play all the seniors because I need to win them games to stay in a job. You've got to really believe in that. It sounds you naive, out, that. It's going to sound naive. You're either selfish or you're naive. I think there's a way to get to promotion. There's a way to get... To, and if that aligns with what I believe in, which is young players, which is, you know, we're seeing is around them. I mean, he played, as I said there, Ash played under me. The environment, the spirit. The very, very top level is different. It's so tactical. There's 1% margins and Ash played at that level. I never got there. I hope to, to do as a manager. But slightly dollar down championship, league one, it's about good spirit, good group of lads who are together. Obviously, you've got to be organised, you've got tactics and stuff like that, but you, you get the environment and the culture right, it's, it's magical. I think that's it's so that, powerful. That's like so big anywhere beneath the Prem because there's so many games. So there's not so, it's, once you get through pre season, you can't be, I think we spoke about it before, you can't be tinkering too much with loads of stuff. 
Wednesday, Thursday, travel Friday, and then you're going to change it all again mm. for Tuesday. It's just you just need that kind of solid togetherness. Yeah, what a good plan, good lads. They know how to grind out results. Managing the, the, the bumps you can get promoted out of League One, the Championship with eight defeats, ten defeats. It doesn't sound that's not negative. That's a fact. So it's managing that Sunday morning. You know what you say to the players after a Saturday defeat because you know you're going to get questions from the owners about the selection and the press. Can you manage your emotions to not turn that pressure on the group of players in the dressing room? Yes, demand standards. Monday morning, what does that look like? You coming as a leader, sometimes the staff are a bit like, is it Gafford looks a bit flat today? You've got another game Tuesday. So you've got to then... You've got so to how turn much it around that is putting a mask on? on? And how much that is um, yourself? Personally, for me, I, it's not easy. Like, sat, <laughs> my wife will tell you, Saturday nights aren't great when you've lost a game. Sundays aren't great, but I'm not taking it home to my kids. I'm not, I'm not doing that. And obviously, I've been through something privately where I lost my daughter. Puts things in perspective and that... Sometimes people would look at me and think, does he does he care that he's lost a game? I just believe it's a way of coping. I think you see too many, and who am I to, to talk about other managers, but you see a lot of people when they come under a few results, can the, press, uh, the pressure, the stress can get on you. Yeah, they wear it, don't they? And it affects you, and it affects your sleep, and then when it affects your sleep, it affects your decision making, and you've got so many decisions to make in a day. I, I always word. thought you were brilliant at that in my Thank season you. at Bristol, in terms of, because we had Lee Johnson, <clears throat> who I love, by the way, I, I think that, the, he, he was like such good value. Feels good like there's manager. a book coming there, don't there? Yeah, there's a, there is a book coming, but okay. I thought he was great. Honestly, I really enjoyed my. I only had one year with him, um, but he was intense, and he and he probably didn't wear that mask very well. He was he let you knew no, or you'd know coming in if we'd lost, like what the day was going to look like. <laughs> but it was good that he had you in there to always put it into perspective that mm. we lost a fo- football game, and we got another one coming. But and it's part of a game and losing is part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, you know, but the good thing is there's always another one. Well, most of the time there's another one coming. So it was a little bit, I think that works quite well, really. Really. John's brilliant. Situation. He cares so much. Brilliant coach, isn't he? Yeah, he I'm really so, good. He cares so much about the game and that's why he keeps getting really good jobs and good luck to him. He's just gone in at Fleetwood, so I hope he, I hope he does well. How has he gone to Fleetwood? He's just gone in at Fleetwood so last week. He didn't, him. Call you, he didn't call you or did he call you and you just want the head coach somewhere now? I've not spoken to him about that one, no. Um, Would you, but is, are you just, are you now, you've had a taste for the manager, you just, is that is that more you now? That's what I love doing the most, obviously. I've been an assistant with Lee at Bristol City. I was assistant with Michael O'Neill, who's another top manager, by the way. Did amazing with Northern Ireland. Uh, I was assistant with Michael at Stoke, loved it. And the, But I've been a manager and I, I love it. Yeah. I love setting the environment, I love setting the planet, I love empowering the staff to be the, the best they can be. Like, let them get on with the job. Yeah, I've got to make the big decisions, upset <clears> players sometimes, the contracts, all that, but I'm cool with that, I'm calm with it. I wouldn't say no to an assistant's job, depending on what level and what, if, it, if it sort of... I don't think I can close my mind and go, I just want to be this, because football now, it's, I mean, anywhere over the world, um, and there's loads of jobs available, but I did love being a manager more than anything, more than being a player. Learning yeah, Arabic, yeah. Sorry? Learning Arabic, yeah. <laughs> Duolingo. <laughs> Duolingo. How many times do yeah. you think that's been downloaded? <laughs> in the last few months, Duolingo. Oh, yeah, definitely. I did, a bit of, I did a bit of, not Arabic, but a bit of Spanish. <laughs> a job come up last week, a and someone said, do you speak German? I was like... Mm, yeah, yeah, just say yeah. 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 <laughs> so you kind of, you go back to your school days, don't you? But you, you just want to be a footballer, so you don't really care for, for school so much. But I, <laughs> I am doing a little bit of Spanish on the Duolingo, I'll be honest with you, but it's not, it's not easy to pick languages up, is it? I've never found it that easy. You know, some people nail it, don't they? There's some people that speak four I can or do five. Spanish. And... You what? I can do Spanish. Fluently. You can't even do Welsh, mate. You've seen the national Welsh, anthem in the Euros. Spanish. You see him? I've got the national anthem down, <laughs> and that's about it. That is the most unreal national anthem. My mate, did, so a, my mate did an Ironman in Tambi last week, <clears throat> yeah. down South Wales, and he, played, he showed me a video, they played it before. Oh my God, goosebumps. The best, the Unbelievable the atmosphere, isn't it? I put that anthem up against anyone. So that's, that's a proper anthem. You touched on it earlier, but I, want, I wanted to ask, a manager since we got kind of one you know, right now is how hard is it to manage up like because we always think about managers managing the players and their staff but how much do you actually have to deal with the people above you before and how man, hard is that I was going to say that's surely the harder part of yeah like that's why I wouldn't I like that you've was, got your head round I'm going to keep him in his place I'm going to pump him up do a little this, bit do that, and but then, then you get you've the call got from... the, the unknown factor coming down yeah you know what but they talk about this on the pro license and that and they do these mock things where you managing up is absolutely one of the most important things I, it's, I don't find it difficult it's challenging bristol city was 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 a little bit easier we had one owner steve lansdowne unbelievable bloke unbelievable fella brilliant to me and my family there was a chief exec in the middle of that so you had to kind of navigate through that oh you know 
Mark yeah, Ashton, who's yeah. doing amazing Ipswich for our play now. And at Stoke, it, it, uh, sorry, at Charlton, it was different because new owners came in, um, a lot of investment from overseas, and then you've got the sort of guys on the front line, so to speak, in terms of the consortium, putting that together. So you've got sporting director, you've got chief exec, you've got chairman, you've got a few other guys in the background. So it's... A lot of it, it would be easier if there was one bloke and you or one lady and you could just and yeah you fall out but as long as you're aligned and everybody's on the same page what do we want from the club next year what's it look like do we want young players do we just want to go and win all them types of style of play um, obviously when there's a lot more uh, I don't know chefs in the kitchen or whatever you want to call it then it's more difficult because there's more personalities involved and people have got opinions and stuff but I'm all, I'm all right with that I, it's time consuming. It's time consuming a lot. Your Sunday after a game is spent speaking to these guys and stuff. It's, it's part of the hard, it's part of the job. If you can't, if you're not prepared to do that, you're not, you're not going to work. I don't think we'd we do well with that. Justifying. I enjoyed it. You pick him because I'm the fucking bon- boss. That's why. Oh, because I've seen him all week. I've seen him. He's been a bag of shit all week. That's yeah. why. I didn't you know what him. you do? Like, I try to front end it. So it's like a little bit sounds ridiculous this with your wife and that. Like you fall at me. We fall out all the time. But we come. There's always conversation. So I front end it. So worst thing you can do is pick a team. They find out in the on the Twitter or whatever up in the boardroom, and they're thinking, "Why is he not picking him?" And him, <clears> and then at half time you take him off. So I always try and just be as honest as I possibly can. So now you course. know what his tactics are. Oh. His front end. Don't bring it. her into this now. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm being quietly over here, just in case I get in trouble. Well, <laughs> she's me now. I know it's, 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 I am punching above me, mate. I get that. I know. I, am. I know. All right. I know. Especially while I'm out of work. Um. Where was I going with that? I try and give him as much information as I possibly can. So he's not, he's been ill Thursday, Friday, but I'm going to put him on the bench. And then so they're not having all these. Don't get me wrong, you make enough bad decisions as a manager, you lose your job. Enough good ones, you'll do really well. Oh, it's mad to me that you but they need the information. Justify your selection, though, isn't it? It's not justifying it. It's giving them. The, these guys are putting a lot of money and a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's it's out of respect. I always, out of respect what I don't understand. I understand that they are putting. It's all their money. And if it was my money, I'd want to know as well what's going on. But if I employ someone, I trust him. I'm not going to keep. I'm not going to pester him. No, my only all question. I've got a question here. What from me? That's right. We said it about like Todd all the time. We joke about like Chelsea and stuff. Just take the manager's job. Yeah. You might as well just take it yourself. If you've got that many opinions, he's probably doing his level two at the minute. If you if you think you can, like, <laughs> if you've got that many opinions, just take the job yourself. You've had a good. Why don't you buy a football club then and employ me as your manager? I'm not that rich. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Use someone else's money. There's loads of money coming in from abroad. <laughs> you just front it. You know what I would say? John Coates at, at Stoke, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like in terms of, I was the assistant to Michael. I had two games as the manager. Just like exactly what you just said there. So involved, so passionate, but like, but yeah, brilliant. But let's you get on with it. Because I think that's what you want from a chief exec or an owner. As, as a manager, I mean, you just want them to come in and say, what can I, how do I make your job easier? You don't need them to come in and go, why have you done that? Because you made me manager and that's my job. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, but I think, yeah, I get, I get, I, but I, I have no problem with that, Steve, because I think that's just the way of the world. I think people always want the players the same. And you can't just go in now and go, we're doing this and that, like Big Sam did. So, I mean, I worked with Big Sam a lot, beginning of my career, but you obviously yeah. worked with him a bit later. He was an innovator massively, but. Is but, he fucking <laughs> innovator? Yeah, maybe in fucking 1978. He always says this. If he wants to. It was 1978. Big Sam walked through that door now. I'm and telling and you, like you this. innovated fuck all. <laughs> I've said it many times. We have it every week on here. But let's just move on from him anyway. I knew I'd get him. That's why I brought him up. Because he's a brilliant <laughs> fella. He's always on the end of a phone for me. That's what I was. Is it? What and there's never. Bloke, he's never. There's never any. All right, so now it's the. How's Daniel? He's just. What do you want? He's like, he's your go-to. The house is on fire, like, it's him. If you want a bit more time and a bit more, something a bit different, maybe ring Dean Smith or Thomas Frank, Steve Cooper, these types of guys I got to know really well. It's really helpful to me. Name dropping Alana. Big time. Brilliant, isn't it? Hopefully one of them will give me a job. <laughs> that um, might be the move. I've seen the way you've got the last couple of jobs. It's assistant, manager gets the bullet. Imagine Tom, Thomas Frank watches us. That'd be he mad. That'd blow my He's mind. a cool fellow, Thomas. He's seen he the other out in the sky. He's he good, good in it. But imagine he just tunes in. We don't know. Because we didn't know who watched it. And then we made some comments about Gareth Southgate and lo and behold, next week... Changed his shit up. We got onto his gear a little bit. <laughs> wore the same gear forever. And then we battered it. And he changed it. Did he? So it's they, they don't realise. I it, think Pep did it as well. We told Pep, take off that baggy fleece. And he took it off. So we don't know. This has got a bit of pull. Changing the game. Bit of reach. Oh, that's why I'm here. Uh. <laughs> so that's what I think you need to do is actually get on a job board. It's, it's 
you, you don't want a manager job, you want the assistant job because you know that <laughs> you can no knife the manager and get the six job. months away from him getting a bullet. I think you, so you just, I was chatting to no, you. That don't sound like that. It sounds like it sounds a bit snaky. I like. went to see a data company in London yesterday about because they put things together for managers. It's interesting this because we were chatting off air, weren't we? Because how do you get the next job? Because a lot of the time now, unfortunately, managers lose jobs. It's, just, it's a sad part of the industry, but they do. Just apply for Chelsea now because they'll probably need one by. <laughs> Tuesday. But the next manager is normally through the door the next day or a couple of days later or a week later and it's, it's, it's a how do you get that opportunity? So it's getting out, it's, meeting it people. It seems like that, doesn't it? But there's some places where you go, like they give someone a bullet and then they go, right then. And you're like, you haven't actually... Then they haven't one. thought of it. Insane. Yeah, yeah. We, it's different ways to yeah, I've seen, we've seen it before where that and go, oh, what's taking... It doesn't even look like there's someone that's knocked it back. They've just gone, he's pissing me off, out. I think yeah. that was now, what you were referring to me at Charlton. I think it was, I think it was <laughs> Happy went I think it was a couple of weeks before Happy got, Happy went in. Good luck to him, by the way, Happy. He's a Michael Apple, and he's from, he's from around the corner from where I'm from, so he got placed on Salford lad for another one. He's, he's got, just, got, he's got bigger biceps than me and a better, he's got a decent sleeve as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he does have, yeah. But he's got a great experience as a manager. I wish him well. It's an a unbelievable lot, A lot with youth development as well, isn't that, isn't it? Yeah, he did a good job at Oxford, didn't he, at Blackpool. He's at a good club there. He'll enjoy it. So yeah, it's it's a weird one, isn't it? So yeah, dude, maybe you maybe you aim off and go for the assistant. You know, you'd like to think that you, you, my reputation's intact from leaving Charlton because it was so quickly and we did so well last season. It, we got five games this season, uh, well, and, the, and, and like owners, I say, a lot of things changed. So the dangerous thing in it, anywhere, anywhere with a new owner. I mean, look at I mean Tuchel and Todd. I mean, I know it's Todd, so he's off his tits, but like Todd, like is his mate. So he's like, he's he's, like, mate, Todd. He's we're like, waiting for the call, but he's still not calling. I'm sure we're, we're sure that it's coming. We we'll, we'll just want to do five games there and then manager and assistant live off the uh, live off. The, but we uh, can salary. we I think we can just talk across you for a minute because I'm not sure you don't want to. Talk about this. <laughs> but how fucking nuts is it? Five games, six games in, and and someone can. I don't understand. It like it makes no fucking sense. Why let me do pre-season if you yeah. think five games in? You need a change. But I, I do think on one hand, the most dangerous thing for any manager is a new owner. I think a new owner has just got an itchy finger and he's just waiting to But go, that's the same as a player. Game. So from a player's perspective, as soon as the manager changes, well, you've got the little camp that aren't playing. They go, thank fuck for that, right? We'll pull They're our, at six we'll pull our finger out now. But for most of the lads, it's just like, you're literally watching the TV, waiting for the call to go, who is it? And then the name might land on your phone and you think, oh, fuck that. You know, I know he don't like me. He's you not, know, his style don't suit me. You know what about the players? I got, I got messages, calls. A couple of them rang me like even last week, but I went through the, when we saw me, someone was, one of my lads was like, has anyone not contacted? You know, the player that doesn't contact the gaffer that's been sacked. And so we went through that and every single player had, had, had been in touch and some had, had got rid of in January on loan. They came back this summer and they still weren't in the team. I think there's, there's a way of dealing with players, isn't there? Nowadays, there's a way of dealing with players. Not about keeping everybody happy. It's about a respect thing. If you're not in the team, here's why you're not in the team. If I want to get rid of you, this is why. It's not personal, is it? And like I said before, it's about creating that environment, that culture. And you, the truth is, in this job, like I said, you're in and out of jobs all the time. Now. Do you know so what? Do you know what I'm grateful I had the opportunity. The people at Charlotte are unbelievable with me. I would never have anything said about that. Hey, it's you know unbelievable. You just said, you unbelievable just said that. It's like, I've always called or text managers, right? So Did you text Big Sam? Nah, well, just he always went first. Yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. I might went before. No, he went before me. Uh, he didn't. I didn't have his number, but oh. the wine. Of... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I didn't have his well, number. I've got it. I'll text, yeah, we we text him now. So text text him. Do you think he Big gives Sam. a flying fuck if I've texted him or not? Big I, Sam's I, not I the guy to care. But the one I didn't text was was Lee Johnson, and I just didn't. I didn't text him the next day, right? And then I didn't text him the next day. Was and it I didn't text him. It was weird. Then we, had a game on, we had a game on a Tuesday, yeah. And then I kept thinking I need to call him because I was we was quite close. Like we'd speak all the time. He used to get you in the office, didn't he, and ask your opinion? And, yeah, and like we was close. And then I didn't text him, and then I felt weird about it. And then I felt like, and then I felt a bit guilty about it because I know how passionate he was. He's like his life, and yeah, yeah. He, And I felt guilty about it. And it, this went on for ages. And he bumped into my agent and said, "He's actually right because I ain't heard of him." And he, and then my agent was like, "Are you taking a piss?" And I was like, well, "I feel." Guilt, like I feel like we let him down a bit, so I didn't want to. I couldn't. I didn't know what to say to him, and then I texted him in the end and went, "Oh, Gaff, sorry, like I oh, know I ain't contacted you." And we we spoke, and I was like, "I just feel a bit shit about the situation." I didn't really know what to say. We've spoke loads since then, but sometimes, like in that situation, it weren't a case of. He must have thought I was thinking, "Frank, fuck, he's gone." But really, I just didn't know. That was the one time, and I was that was my last manager, like my last club. 
And even at that age, I was still thinking... That was, two, that was sure a COVID season, do. so that was two and a half weeks before the end of the season when Lee, we lost to Cardiff, didn't we? Lee, unfortunately, got sacked that night and his chief exec dragged me in and said, will you take the team? And you're like, well, you can't walk away from your contract. Like, people think footballs are all earning the same. It's not. At my level, it certainly wasn't that. You can't walk out of a contract, can you? We got five games at the end of the season and, and I got the job in, in the summer. So when he got sacked, unfortunately, on the Saturday, we played we had a, played Hull on the Tuesday night, didn't we? It was literally five games in two weeks. So like you say, it was just... Game and then that was the end of you. Your career was done then, wasn't it? Well, I said, I've seen. I've said. I know before. I had. I knew I was finishing. We we went away. Covid. Come back. Nine games. I knew I was gone, not going to play anymore. Them zooms were good. Games, the the fitness zooms were good, weren't they? I got sent off, and then I knew I had six games left of my whole life <laughs> and missed four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> idiot. Worst no tackle ever. It, it was like I, I don't even know. It was something stupid. Get it, at you, Nottingham get Forest. It, you put it into this. If you edit it in, it weren't a tackle. It weren't. I know it, that was the red card. This before. Ah, no, it was the, it headbutt, was the push. It? it weren't headbutt. It weren't an headbutt. It weren't an headbutt. Did you build him or did you? I oh, know. Oh, it's it's kind of push. Was it the city ground? Yeah, I remember now. Sorry, I remember it. Yeah, he jumped up. You don't need to. You don't need to get it. It was a red card. Stupid. Well, then we had two games. No, it, went, it was against... I was banned for that game. It no, was, it was, it was, it was, it was Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest. Bristol v Nottingham Forest. You're going to get it. You're wasting in time. It wasn't even an entertaining one. It wasn't a good one. Boo. You so need to you watch just, the whole you highlight. You just said you always text the manager. We've just pulled up two cases and you didn't text the other one. Right, okay, well, are we now being really specific on this show all of a sudden? Yep. All of a sudden now we have to specify the exact thing we mean. Because well, you, you've said some wild but, shit on there. But I would never say I always... Well, okay, actually, then I like to I, think. I've had a lot of managers. I've, I've had a lot of managers. And the ones that I like, I text. <laughs> oh, cool. Chris Coleman. 100%. Son of. Straight away. What a guy. I can't believe it. What a guy. Fucking devastated. Straight away. No way. It can't be real. Gaffer, tell me it's not real. Whilst my phone was going with all the other lads going, fucking no way, no way. And he was like, yeah, sorry, Ash. You had something special going there. It's just, what, it's, it's just something's happened, whatever. And, and then I remember we had Palace the next day. Um, and everyone was fucking dev. That was devastation. Like that was proper. Everyone was good, and we was all at our clubs as well. But the group chat was going off. That you think like it doesn't. The relationship's not that tight. That one was like we was tight, and then we lost the leader, and it was like, what the fuck do we do now? Like, where do we go from here? Because we didn't know. Um, right then, I've got a question for you. I want the best of managing Ash. And the worst of managing Ash. Because what? he's not down the middle, is he? How's that relatable to this show? Because it's a, an insight from someone who's managed you. So shut up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically how I used to manage you. <laughs> I told yeah, you got to remember that majority of the time he was the assistant. So we, I did that's five different thing. So a manager. So like, you're, he's observing you in close proximity. Now, as an experienced pro, so there was lots of positive Good. things about yeah, it. So, but well, you're also a pain in the ass. So I know no, I am to you because you're a pain in the ass to see, me. See, when That's I was fine. a player, right, I would always be front of the running. Like, I had a fight with a player who's now the Newport manager, but I won't name him. An Irish fella. In pre-season because <laughs> Paul Simpson, the Carlisle manager, was, was the manager of Shrewsbury and it was, it was pole to pole. It was the worst run I've ever done in my life. Well, I had three broken legs. And I was rubbish. That's you had three game. broken and legs. I like free. Most I never, by the way, two legs as well. never got, <laughs> <Mad dad. laughs> never got a free kick for any of them. I swear <laughs> down, I'm laying on the pitch all three times, going like, anyway. And I was crap, so I'm not using that as an excuse. That's why I didn't get uh, to the to the top. But I was always like, my attitude, my fitness was always. And we we're doing these doggies line to line. I hate players that cheat the line. Like, not for me. And he was the captain, and he used to, if he used to think he was a bit Brian Robson, a bit Captain Marvel, and that, and I just called him out. Oh, this is more I, used the word I, I used the word I shouldn't use and would never use in front of a camera. And the man had Simo, Simo stopped the running because I was miles behind because basically because it brought my leg centimetre and a half shorter. Back, <laughs> back, every time I did long distance running, my back would just seize up. But I was just, I weren't stopping. Nothing was stopping me. I'm not asked to go and, like, go and have your dinner. I'll carry on. I'll get there. Just something you like. Like you've got a video camera on your shoulder going, you're not going to cheat, are you? I don't know. It's just something in me. And he was cheating the lines because he wanted to keep up and I just called him. So, context, he, the worst of him, like, he's a senior player, top level, you want him to... about me now, to get a coming back to you now. Put a you know, warm-ups and that, you know, when you see him just strolling about and turning up, like, right on the dot of what time we're about to start, and then, like, just, not tossing it off, but, like, once training was, like, he was, and he was a game player. Training, games, no problem, but see all them bits 
just oh, can, I, can I touch on this? Have you finished? Well, well the, the best of him is obviously the experience, like in the dressing room, talking to the young players, just sometimes without saying anything. So, and you might disagree, but sometimes you just watch. So I'm, I'm going and observing a lot of people at the moment, inside and outside of football. Sometimes you don't even need to chat. You're just watching how they behave. And you know, it's a bit of a stupid thing to say, but how do they prepare? How do they recover from games? How did, and he was top notch at that, which is why he got to the very, very top. But he did used to piss me off in, in warm ups and that. Can, can, I, can, I, can I just interject? Is that right? it? Is that all we've got? Like, he was a bit naffy. Yeah, warm-ups. because of what yeah, you, you want shit. I don't know. You want shit. And there, there's, he, I didn't give him none. But the thing is, what the, so I, from my view on that, right, you've hang on. Because <laughs> we started in what? When did, You're so, going to come for me, jacket now, innit? Like, 2003 or whatever, when I. When I kept, when I was a kid and he was in the first team, we didn't have six warm ups to get warmed up. But at the end of my career, I got sports scientists telling me what I need to do with my ankle for fifteen <laughs> minutes <laughs> to get it right before I play. Right. So then I'm, I'm in that environment, and that was why I knew I'm, I'm done here. My it's gone. This general my what I used to doing and this new crop are different. So then at like Bristol in my last club. It was a case of Paddy. Paddy was great, weren't he? But he'd be like, Ash, man, I just need you to pretend <laughs> that you give a fuck about the pre-activation because all the other lads are watching are, you. Are you not putting it in the mix in a foam roll then? No, you're not. Nah, like the, I don't want a foam roll before training. <laughs> I want to get in. I want to um, have a meeting, eat breakfast, get changed and go and train. I don't want to do four pre act sessions and warm-ups and everything before I kick the ball. So that was, I think that, that was my take on the same topic like, Let me tell you a funny story. Where was he away again? We played. We went an overnight or somewhere with Bristol. <laughs> just remind so me. Just like. do it. He went, please, because we've got young lads and they're looking up to you. And I was like, oh, I'll sit on the bike and pretend for you. We had an overnight stay, right? And it was brilliant. Lee was good at that one. Do you remember when you all did a mock theatre thing? Play. So everybody pretended to all yeah, the but where players, was but it? show together. It was, it was up north somewhere from Bristol. It was maybe Huddersfield away or something like that, wasn't it? Um, and all the players pretended to be staff. And remember Callum O'Dowd got on his... He got on his like on his knees, pretending to be the gaffer because Lee's not the biggest, and he had this big big watch on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he took me. Do you remember? And he took me off because I used to take to. Oh, I used to take a lot of the team meetings, and like I'm very, <laughs> you're probably well aware now. I've got a monotone voice, and I'm well aware of that. So, and I believe in players giving information back in meetings. It's not just standing there doing this and that. You get the why, like I said. I so think you're giving you need him, to because a lot of the time uh, you get screen saved. We're, we're a lad caught, he's just gone, he's just gone <laughs> to Burnley on it, Han Noah. Han Noah Masengo, this kid come over from Monaco, 18, big Fellaini Barney, some player on it, but he was like like that and he needed time. And I used to question him. <laughs> I remember pausing the video clip going, right, where, should, where do you think you should be on this? Rather than going, get, you know what I mean? You've got to make sure the players are learning. And I'd use some French word or something that didn't make any sense. It was There's a word <laughs> called, I think it's Assi. Which either means sit down or come here. And I wanted him to get up and we had a touch screen, wanted him to get up and but whatever I was saying to him was like sit down. And I kept saying, I see, I see, or E C or something like that. Anyway, then he basically, he mocked me in this. Oh, it was unreal, wasn't it? He's quite good at he's quite good at impressions, I'll give him that. <laughs> Why was you trying to What I didn't get was you was trying to he can speak perfect English. <laughs> <laughs> trying to speak French to him. <laughs> trying to, to get to you know what was going on. That was, was good. To, uh, I, yeah, Lee Johnson was, he was good for shit like that. He was really good, like, the stuff like that. Is that your question out of the way? Gone off topic a bit no, again. I, but... Yeah, I mean, I thought, yeah, senior pro, probably chats to the lads. I thought, I'm going to have to ask the good. I can't just ask the bad, but, so I didn't really want to ask a good impression. What's your, what, what's, what's the, what annoys you the most about me? Timekeeping. I knew, it, I knew you'd say that. That, is that what annoys you? Everyone's timekeeping annoys me. Well, everything fucking annoys you, <laughs> evidently, anyway. Everything. But Yeah, timekeeping pisses me off. Okay, cool. Oh, he's a bit Dave Brailsford. He's a bit like, what is it? On time, he's late. Early he's on time, on time, he's late. Because I walked yeah, in at 7.59, right? You, and he looked at me, didn't even shake my hand. He was mate, like, give me a bit listen, of a... Listen, it was... That was because I've got no fucking fingers. Oh, is that what it was? It was March, and he's trying to organise his summer. And I kid you not, he had the day... Today of his July. Yeah, because I was maddest, in America. It was, was the in maddest different cities. fucking WhatsApp message I've ever had. And he was going, which of these days can you do? But he's ex-military, isn't he? Yeah, it's, it's, that's what I have to deal with all so the time. So we think we're institutionalised. He's on Honestly, another level. He's going, and he'll, he'll just Pop message me like now. And he'll go like 4th of December at like 
Uh, 1 p.m. You free? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no! I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. What do you mean? Oh, because we got. I wouldn't mind you coming in. I'm like Steve, man. Honestly, just shout me. I think what we got, we've sorted it out. Where you all just don't bother. Yeah, or maybe just pop <laughs> me before. <laughs> what, what two different job styles that we've come from? There. Are you gonna hit the questions? Yeah. So, all right. So I asked on Twitter. <laughs> Someone wants you to pronounce that Welsh team. Bollocks, to ask them to pronounce it because no one can pronounce it. Apparently they're twinned with Chelsea because it's the only place with more L's. How are they so bad? Is Poch going to survive? That's or Chelsea? Yeah, Chelsea. Is Poch going to survive or I is he going to get... I read Poch, he's bought my God, he he's, he's unreal if he's got time. He'll rebuild the club for me. But he's going to get unreal. time. When you spend I, think he will. That, I think he will now. He's got so many players. Even I'll be shocked if he gets rid of him now, I think. I don't think I would. They won't get rid of him. Every time you walk into a room, a song plays. What's the song? So you can choose, like, I guess so. an entry song. It's too big of a question. I need time to think about it. Well, because sometimes it's going to be well inappropriate. d ream things know? can only get better. Why well, do you have some like, dead angry, heavy what, metal see, what, or I'm some not even shit. that angry. Mad, slipknot. I'm not angry. Limp Biscuit <laughs> or something coming in. How dare you? Break stuff. Not even angry. Have you ever met saying that? that angry. Again, <laughs> you're saying it angry. You're you just angry. assume it's angry. Ah. I'm not. Okay. It's passionate. He's mad, yeah, there you go. We've got a live audience today, look. It's good, a bit of energy in the room. <laughs> if Ash saw there was a chance to frame a striker for a red, would he do it? Uh, or, or did he do it? To frame a striker for a red? Explain. Get him so sent off. Get a, a strike sent off, if you had the opportunity. Uh, All day long, he would. It depends what it is. Well, it just says, would you do it? I guess. Um, it depends. Did you ever do it? No, I can remember. I might have. I wouldn't, I don't think. I, uh, Who was your hardest I battle, Ash? Who was your hardest battle? In the, was it international or Prem? Um, well, like one See, questions like this are quite interesting. Like it's probably individual. not someone. Yeah, like the hardest player you played against. It's probably not someone you would normally think no, of. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you know what? Honestly, there's some mad ones that people wouldn't throw, you wouldn't expect, like. Like Ashley Barnes, he's tough. He's like, it's just, it's just a tough game. It's not enjoyable. Chris Wood, when there's when them two mm. were together, just weren't enjoyable. But I'd have to go with Suarez because we played him so many times, and that was just, it just relentless, just fucking at you relentlessly. Like you could have wound him up as well, Ash. No, we Easy. had a couple of tear ups. So no problem. That's but, why you should have gone into coaching. I'm, not, I'm just stealing your job a bit here now. But when I was talking before about the way he talked to youngsters, like sometimes it would be. It's not always about guiding the young centre backs. It's sometimes about talking <laughs> to a young. We had Antoine Semenyo, who's obviously gone for big money to uh, to Bournemouth. We're going to claim a bit of that. Well, over that, aren't we? But we ain't got the money, but it's fine. <laughs> but we, we helped him. <laughs> but speaking to him and saying, right, this is what gives me problems as a centre back. Like this yeah, is the yeah, movement yeah. that you, you know what I mean. Things like that. That's what that 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 was. Yeah, you, you, it's you my, wasted. It's we good on the TV. Don't get me wrong. We, you we, wasted. Cheers, pal. We played Liverpool. I offered him. <laughs> I offered him. That, <laughs> summer, when boring, it, that summer when I got the job at Bristol City, I offered him play a cultural, and he looked at me and he was a bit like, because he, he, he'd had two weeks of a bit of a. <laughs> like when you go to high school for that day, and he's like, I didn't know how much went into this time wise, and like I said, it's. It, it was mad. I think we spoke about. We've not got twelve hours a day in him, has it? I think we, we spoke about it before. Fuck off, you! Like, I worked jobs, but man. that would have been no you jobs don't. at fucking sixteen. You, you did. You've got a fucking part time job on a Saturday at the moment. I worked when I was a kid. I days. worked when I was a kid. So yeah, you don't know. Not I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Oh no! Yeah, I'm not now. I'm not doing that now. But what happened was I don't know how your day. We even said. Right I even now. said to him, have a couple of months out of it. Did you? Go and go and look at the other side of life. Go and hold it. Whatever you need to do, and go and. Clean, oh, I clean your house gonna... take two weeks the size of his place I, and then take... if you don't want to come back Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for Adina, you I'm not taking a piss but I thought you was going to be like getting the Curzon Ashton job or something <laughs> so I thought fuck that well, end up getting Ashton. a couple of decent ones huh? no well, disrespect no. <laughs> no you're regretting it <laughs> now I've not got none um, I had something to say dickhead can't remember now you're on about Suarez Suarez Oh yeah. yeah, he's gone now. Come on, the, next the kid, question. The he does. He's a good player, isn't it? No, nothing. Go next question. I want to know. Now. It's gone. You, you know what? The thing is about you today. We, as you know, we film on a Thursday. Last night. What, what happened last night? Because this is why I know you, you want to talk about United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do yeah, yeah. This is the day this that you. This is the day you don't want to talk. This is the only episode they've not come up yet. Normally we get three minutes in. You want to talk about it? You don't talk. <laughs> I ain't heard you mention it once. A You're in a bad mood. I'm not. <laughs> you just not fucking shit it. Arsenal didn't. Talk about that. Because yeah. you say you're a straight up guy, so talk about that. What happened? It was shit. Cool. 
technical term that. <laughs> is that there's <laughs> no way Ten Hag's not just put a video on and gone shit lads surely that's how he's gone down this morning he's gone that shit that shit are you getting man up in the box principles basics only one minute. message I think came from you last night was where was the midfield on that <laughs> <laughs> you're getting and I thought there was three goals and I was like which one <laughs> there's only well, not a penalty there's, there's only four United if the whole back four is in the box and the midfield is sauntering back it's by Munich you know you're going to get overloaded you know they're going to flood numbers uh, here we in go. why are we walking there we go. it's not good right. enough go how are you letting the Gnabry get go back to the question I just wanted to just, I wanted box. it out a bit I knew, I knew you need what? to get it out by Munich four out of ten on it did it even try? I didn't see it. I was coming back from London from that, that meeting. Me, I, had, I watched try. them on Saturday. Brighton were unbelievable at Old Trafford, I've got well, to say. With Arsenal, the ball, Brighton, unbelievable. Bayern. It's been the same game. Brighton went man for man all over the, the pitch. Game. I'm watching it. you got Duncan, Van Heck. They're not even quick. 2v2 two on the halfway line, like Marshall and Rashford. Like, you wouldn't have enjoyed that, Ash, would you? But honestly, they were, you can see yeah, why yeah, Deserve is getting all, all the plaudits. Oh, I'm trying to stay away from United. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Go back to your questions. John I think it's better watching, now to get back John to your Madden questions. John was watching it last night. I was watching it proper through my eyebrows like... I knew you was mad because you weren't writing. <laughs> and you write, like, in games, you write a lot and then you only put one message in and then John... There'd been a time that he'd have paid to go there but because he's not getting paid to go over now, he's not. He's just thinking I'll sit and watch it all. Yeah, it's funny, why don't you go to that? It's in Munich. I've got far too many responsibilities is, but... to spend two, three days in Munich. Oh, but you just do two, three months in America in the summer and that's fine. You got paid, didn't yeah. it? Is that the difference? There's also my job, so yeah. Okay. Um, any more? What have we got? Yeah, there's loads. Go on, then. Close All on. right, then. Did you say that Dino was in today? Did you just miss that? No, I said someone who's played <laughs> with him. And I thought, I'll see what sort of questions that sort of comes out with. Someone wants to know United line up against Burnley. Who fucking cares? Just don't be a shit. Uh, Is your team to up? If you had to build a team around one young under 25 year old in the Prem, who and why? Both of you. One player. I'll go Alex Scott. You're looking at me through them eyebrows. Just a random Bristol fucking City player. Yeah, no, I'm not no. trying to take credit for this, but <clears> he <throat> was but in and around. <laughs> but he was like, you know why? He'd been released from Bournemouth and Southampton. He lived in Guernsey, so he was flying over there and they said he weren't big enough. At 14, and this is my big pet eight with academies, but I'm not going to bore you with that. He's now, what is he now, 20? They've just sold him Bristol City for 25 million. And when you say he's a bit, three years ago, he's a bit like Grealish, people go, yeah, all right, mate. He's got this arrogance on the ball. He wears his pads low on his socks, whatever. He's injured at me, isn't he? Yeah, he's got an injury, but he's, he's got the potential. You watch him in the Man City game last season, for a young player to go. And he's not the most obvious name you'd come out with either, is he? Like he'll come out with now someone like that's got fifty caps or something. Yeah, like I mean, I wouldn't. But he's fought back. He's fought back. He was there when you were there. He was there yeah, that summer. Yeah, yeah. He was there. Um, but he's fought back from two clubs who've said now, nah, mate, and gone back to Guernsey. Played non-league for a year in Guernsey's men's team, and then Bristol City. Brian Tinney was a technical director. What a Guernsey! Unbelievable eye for a player. Um, I don't know. You know what they are? I think the Conference South is daft as that sounds. I think they have to obviously fly over. I think, yeah, something like that level. But Alan Man. I know Barnet, yeah. You know the, the kid who scored against Brighton? The Barnet sideshow? Yeah, Hannibal. Yeah, how good is he? he is he, the, is he, the, is, could he, is he someone we're putting this conversation or not? No, not in that conversation, no. Um, the only one I would got say. He's tempo about his play, which I like. He's got. Who was the one you were buzzing off after pre season? Not him. Manu. Yeah, Manu. It's Manu. Manu's injured. Okay. Manu had fucking Declan Rice on a fucking lead all around that pitch. £105 million pound player. The only other one I would say nice. which would missed out was Evan Ferguson. Right. Yeah, that yeah, might be the answer. From the Prem. He's a machine already. He's going to be a very, very special I'm going to not do what they've asked me to, but I'm going to say Bellingham. I was watching Bellingham last night with my mouth open. Just thinking, he's, he's so fucking good. I didn't watch that game. It's, it's just the joke, decisions. It? It's like he's got hours on the ball. He's, so mature. He's dangerous age, with it. And he's got so much time. And obviously he pulls out the winner. And I, I think I put that in about 20 minutes before I actually got the winner. I'm just like, I'm just loving watching him play. This is an opportunity for you to scout, like to shout one up early again now. You like not, we haven't done it yet. It's nowhere near a transfer window, so there's, not, okay. there's no point talking right. about it. Okay. We, we're probably... November, December, we'll probably put some before Bill asks squads around whoever. You've not said anyone? I don't know. Phil Foden. 
Let's go. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what you do for him? Can Ash explain the lack of effort from McTominay last night? He was on the pitch less than 10 minutes and the ref out sprinted him. Can I explain it? Like as if it was me running. Fuck's he got to do with me? Um, no, I can't. I don't know. Maybe he's pissed off that he doesn't play. I don't know. I don't think that the result was on McTominay, but there you go. Uh, how big a deal was it losing the first South Wales derby? Big deal. Massive deal. And the fact that they've fucking not won yet anyway. And then you followed it up with a draw against QPR. It's not fucking great. It's not good there at the minute. All right, here's one from Freya. You've been sent 2,000 years in the past. You've got nothing on you. How do you communicate with the locals and how do you prove you from the future? Well, he's fucked if he lands in France. Fucking <laughs> 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 <Okay>, bonjour. <laughs> Sorting it over. <laughs> well, it says you can communicate with the locals, so I guess wherever you are, you speak the lingo. How do you prove you from the future? Oh, I was going to bring this up this week. Sorry, what? Maybe we'll do it next week. Bring what up? Bring it up, we've got time. Time travelling. It's not possible. Next question. I know, yeah, but like, it's, I just want you to know that some people say that they have. I didn't right. know if you knew that. There's plenty of people that say all sorts of shit. Yeah, I know. I wanted to discuss it, though. Go on, then. No, we'll go to, back to that. Let's finish the question first. We've got time. But there'll be a week where we're pretty fucked at about 20 minutes where we need to talk, <laughs> so we'll just save it for that. Next international break. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What would she do? Fuck. She's asking you. So, wait, let me get it right. I've gone back 2,000 years. Why flopping? Do you want to give us an answer? Like 2,000 years. I've gone back 2,000 years. got nothing. I've got nothing on me, right? So... No phone. Right, so, but I can talk to the locals. What am I going to do? How would oh. you prove you from the future? Why don't you get a football out? Play a game of football with them. Burn him. Which? I'm trying to take it away from aliens because I've got quite some interesting views, but I'd rather not share them. Oh, let's go aliens. then. What on aliens? Manager again. On aliens? No. Just on life. Oh, this is what... No. Well, let's do it. And then we'll watch... There's a sequel, there's a sequel. If he thinks it's metal, he'll cut If I've not got a manager's job next Thursday, I'll come back in and talk about it. It doesn't really matter because we'd all lose our jobs anyway, but at the other end of the camera, they look after us. (laughs) He'll get it. Just (laughs) say it. If it's too much, they'll cut it. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking food. Take from the future by just telling him something that's going to happen. Yeah, but then you've got to wait 2,000 years then. Well, you don't have to They're not going to be around. You don't have to tell them who won the FA Cup in 1973. Like, you can just fucking... But that's the thing. What happened 2,000 years ago where you can go, I'm going to tell you this is about to happen. Like, there wasn't that much going on, really, was there? I don't know. What are you, you going to say? Like, I don't know. How do you prove from the future? Yeah, maybe. Like, is there any sort of, like, know. what's not been invented that you can invent and yeah. show them? Football. A football, yeah. That might be a move. Well, I bet they'll kick you around, don't they? Stop rocks. Why don't you do pre-ab? Why don't you get them all doing okay. foam rollers and all that? I'm going to go... I'm, I'll say, right, what's going to happen here. <laughs> foam rollers. Get them in the ice bath. Ice baths, Wim Hof. Get, are you, you on the Wim Hof? Uh, not for the on, the same reasons, but sort of, yeah. I got an ice bath in the garden. I've got. I've received um, an ice back, uh, an ice bath selfie close up to his face. <laughs> oh, I've seen it. I've seen it on Instagram yesterday. I was watching oh, him. Did yeah. You, did you put did when you he's put like screaming into the? Instagram, yeah. Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's like it's funny because you're in the ice bath and you've obviously sent me the picture to say like, ah, this is her, and that's what I look at every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> you have time on the fucking minute. <laughs> Yeah, that was the worst fucking defender ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, oh, I'm not angry. Why do you think I'm, I think I'm fucking angry around there? I'm chilled. I am chilled. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you know who's the best defender that the Premier League's ever seen? Um, He's going to mug me off now. I'd have to say Rio Ferdinand. He's, he's second for me. I'm because of his pace, I'm because of his reading, of it, like you'd look at what, like physically, he could he could have a scrap with someone. Maybe not in the Vidic territory, but he could go toe to toe with someone. People Positional who meet him play. Go, fucking, I didn't think he was so big. He's massive, isn't he? He's like fucking absolutely huge. Positioning, so his brain, because he was so. Sometimes the reason I say it, sometimes when players are so quick, they're a bit lazy, so they think, well, I'll get back in anyway. His positional play to get there, I never really seen him go to the ground. That was so his whole he, thing, wasn't it? Hashtag stay on your feet. And he can, my god, he can play with the ball at his feet, and he scored a goal. And he cared. And he's two. He's number two for you. So he's one. You know who's one. 
Is it for real? Oh, I was going to get him into town to speak to the youngsters before, just as I was, just as I got sacked, because he's South East London. He's from the area. I thought, what a magical thing to show lads coming through the academy. Really good at that team, as well. South East London went and kept in England and humble with it, and, and he was bu- he was buzzing to come in and speak about it, and then. I was I like, th- just I give me th- another week. I've got Rio coming in. We'll win, I, I we'll think, win the next game. I think he actually does buzz off doing that sort of stuff as well. Because he used to do it when he was at United without being asked. He'd just fucking steam in there. The 18s have lost to City and he's in. It's like no one's asked him to go in. He's just fucking in and, and letting them know. I think that's in him. You know, I don't think managing or, or coaching is necessarily in him, but that being around it as a mentor in, in mm. some sort of way, I think is excellent for him. So who's you, number one? What was the question? Number one defender. Yeah, but he said midfielder Brian Robson Rio. all day long. Rio. Yeah, he's Rio. Well, he said second. I think Rio. Where are you putting Yap Stan? Are they all? Are you going to just keep coming up with United centre back? I mean, Yap was. No, no, a no. Well, that's I what we do know, most for weeks. Me, he, he turns I mean, everything back to Yap United. A, he turns yeah. every question to United and and, and tries to get Yap Stan uh, if he can. It was a travesty, weird. wasn't it? When he Who's left, when he did, done three right. seasons, won a treble, won three titles, and then bounced. Nobody. Top player, can't. No, no one has ever had. to put him seventeenth. Next question. But yeah, I mean, Robbo's a little bit before my time. Let's go. Is the vegan diet better for recovery? I can't, don't know. I like it. We give a fuck. Next one. Do you not remember when they did that talk about keep bringing it back to Bristol City, don't I? He'd got all the lads. He'd read the Djokovic. I haven't got, 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 got all the lads. I haven't got all the lads. So Brown hit Burnley now. Wait, wait, I went in at 36. I went in at 36 and blitzed the fucking fitness stats and all that. True. He's saying that, he's true. He's saying that, whatever. And then all the lads are going, what do you do? what's happening? I'm going, I'm eating my leaves over here. So then they all, they all copy me. And then the fucking... The sport, fit- this is why I don't like sports science, because he mugged me. Rollsy and that, Rollsy and that were going, Ash, fuck me, can you stop? And I said, I haven't told anyone anything. They They're basically said, me. they bought in literally a load of leaves on it on the table in the meeting room and went, do you know how much you would have to eat to get what you need? It's all right for life, but as a professional footballer, the intake that you need to go Saturday, Tuesday. <laughs> so it's like a steak and then it's it like a forest on this leaves. table on it you'd have Fish to literally leaves. eat that um, I didn't understand it I was getting I was, he was in good nicks to be fair well, yeah, well, you, you've kept the timber it. off since you finished and yeah. I think that's probably down to being a vegan I, I, I enjoy it it's, but you had a it suits me. fucking right meatball when you were playing though didn't you from the back of the net I remember <laughs> when I first looked I, I first noticed the fact that my, the back of my neck was fucking chunky as fuck and I just thought <laughs> fucking hell what the fuck's going on back there it's just all sorts of like fucking just big that's why he got his dreadlocks to cover it up yeah no, no, when he came to hold him he looked like Fellaini you should have seen him had this when he got, just had seen that the picture. fucking number one fresh oh. off D-wing cut that he had when it was like when was that Everton days <laughs> I've got big to be honest fucking meatball head <laughs> second, second best Everton centre back that I've worked with to be fair, because we had we had Jags as well. <laughs> <laughs> Have we seen his goal at Anfield at the cop end? We'll we'll tell tell I'm asking Jags jokes. his goal in the derby. We'll tell Anfield the jokes, the Dino, around there. Right? <laughs> there was a game I watched the other day and I was talking to him about it. I can't remember what the fuck I was watching it for. I think it was 2016 against uh, Zlatan. He had a good game against Zlatan, actually. He must have been Anfield to you play You watched against. some fucking mad games. Yeah, Zlatan was a fucking problem, real one. A real problem as well. Like, just unit. And really good. But oh, you, a, you did have a good game against him. What score was that? Was it 1-0? I know where you're going. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. You're I'm a not. prick. I've only just remembered that you got sent off in that game. Oh, dear. Yeah, that, but that yeah. wasn't why I was watching it. Okay, it was a good, yeah. Well, no, but you had a good game apart from getting Okay, thank you. So, defensively, is it? Yeah, I've got him in the Jags thing. And it's Big Sam and yeah. Jags, they're the two that just always Big get Sam him. Just Jags. remember that. Next time I don't life. understand how it comes out you as a coming at me. Talk about me getting, like, I'm, I'm angry. How many red cards you had? Not that many, if you Google it. How many times many. when he was at Bristol was he outside the opposition change room trying to fight him? No, that no. Was I? I didn't have any meltdowns there, do I? I kept my head. Head, head end gone. John, I was going to love us here because we keep bringing him back up. You don't remember the one against Leeds? During the game? Me? Or was it him? So the ball went in the stand behind the dugouts at Ashton Gate against Leeds and one of their coaches as a masseur or someone grabbed it and thrown it at Lee Johnson in the dugout. He's watching the game. Cocked him on the back. He turned around. It's called yeah, Paul. He's a master, Paul, forget X player, good player. For some reason, he's gone down the tunnel five minutes before our time to get the dressing room ready, ice baths, whatever it would have been. John, I was chased him in the dressing room. And all their bench and all our bench and everyone, our, the other assistant manager, so I'm studying technical area like a gaffer now. Like the whole, everyone's 15 men, 20 men or whatever in the dugout going. I don't know where you were. You probably, you might have been on the pitch. I don't think you got sent off that game, did you? Oh. <laughs> 
You might not know about it. I was never spoken about trying to calm it all down. No, you weren't. Yeah, I was. Just trying to calm it down. Guys, let's talk about this. There's other ways to deal with it. You know, He's a lover, not a fighter, isn't he? I have to fight all the time about everything. I'm not buying it. Do you know what I'm quite enjoying? The fact that David Moyes has gone fuck off to everyone. <laughs> I'm going to play how I want to play and he's doing well. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much emphasis on Brighton. Villa now. Mm. Brighton are impressive. Yeah, but no, no, but it's great. And Pep and Arsenal and everybody else. And then David Moyes has looked at it and gone, I'm going to do the complete opposite. Deitch was... Successful for a long time with yeah. Burnley with that, and obviously well, Stoke was he successful. Has the players now. It was different, wasn't it? But he doesn't have those that player profile to do that. When he's maybe still trying to do it. I went to a leadership thing in London a few weeks ago with David Moyes spoke, and he talked about Roy Hodgson reinventing himself. He talked openly about that, about how he used to, not only his teams used to play, but his leadership and that. And Kevin Owens obviously been there with him for a while, hasn't he? And he's completely changed how he used to manage to what he's like now well, with some of these foreign change, players and the younger well. players, just getting a little bit more. They always say, don't they, when you get to a certain age, you're mellow and stuff like that, but the more openness with the players, more accepting of certain things that maybe a few years ago you wouldn't have done foreign players coming into the game. Trusting his coaches. I think he's just re-changed his coaching staff again this couple of weeks ago, just re reshaping it, uh, giving them a bit more ownership to coach rather than doing everything yourself. and it's Just moving with the times, I think, because yeah. man is the time of a manager now. He's 24-7, isn't it? So. What's going to dictate your next... Um sort of philosophy when you go into somewhere obviously you're going to have your own ideals as you come in there but how much of it is dependent on what raw materials you've got when you walk in yeah a lot of that I think it depends who it is and when it is so when I went into Charlton it was Christmas four days before Christmas the team was 18th leaking goals but it wasn't about expansive play that's how the team were playing to be fair under Ben Garner really good football but the pitches had changed in League One they lost a few key players to play that way so it was about making them solid it was about stopping conceding goals a bit of counter-attack football to go and get some results, get some confidence, get the fans back and then you can go and play. Mm. So normally, you know, if and when I get my next job, hopefully soon, it'll normally because the team is struggling, isn't it? When you're going, unless a manager's been poached because they've done great, normally it's because the team is struggling and get rid of the manager, right? How can we change it? So biggest thing I always do from day one is make everybody part of it. So kitchen staff, ground staff, I speak to still some of them now from Charlton. They're no less important than the top, so-called top player. I'm not having it. Another story about Fergie bollocking the uh, the kitchen and canteen staff because we lost to Liverpool one one time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that story. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? I've been on the other side of that where you you, you wake up and you think oh, I'm not really looking forward to going in. Like, let's not forget, like post COVID, this country's on its ass and it? it's not in a great place. People want to enjoy going into work. I think if you, whatever role they play is an important role that's going to help the team win. No, they might not go on the pitch. And again, this sounds ridiculous, but they're not going to go on the pitch and stop a goal going in or be a top scorer. But them doing their job all week properly, the kit man, getting the lads buzzing about when they've lost a game or the kitchen staff being banged on it. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, because really, they drop the ball. None of that takes any talent, you see. When I went to Charlton, there was little silos here then everywhere, a women's team and academy. And if, if I genuinely am really proud of that. The, 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 yeah, we lost a few games and I got sacked, but the club's in a better place because people genuinely loved coming in and being themselves and not having to play up to... How many players did you play with? That kind of, you have to play up to being this. I certainly did it. Play up to being this certain personality to fit in. And the world's changed now, so... You get the most out of people that way. And then you can have a straightener with them when they're not performing because they know that you care about them. So, yeah, and then you get on with it afterwards. Do you think that it's easier to go... Well, I suppose you haven't, you've maybe not had all these scenarios, but I'm guessing it would be more difficult in a weird way to take the, a club that are doing well where the manager's been poached than a club struggling. Because I'm just guessing. Expectation. Yeah, level. and like, do you keep doing what he was doing, but you want to put your own stamp on it? If it's a club that have, you've gone in like Charlton and not doing very well, you can just take and control. Good question, Ash, isn't it? But you know, when you go into a team, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation no. or not, but it would be quite difficult, I guess, to manage to say, okay, well, he's gone and they all enjoyed the way he did it. And so a manager's winning. doing well now, gets poached, and I get yeah, the job. And then you, but you, yeah, also you try and change it, they're all going to be yeah, like, can't come in and, whoever did it. You yeah. know what? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Like, you watch the previous few games, don't you? And if they're playing really well and things are going well, and even if they're not getting results, but they're playing really well, you still might stick to certain things. But if it's not broke, don't fix it. I think it comes down to your ego at that point. Like, what's the check? What's the what's the point in changing it? Over, it's probably a slower burner yeah, then, isn't it? It's so probably so. over time you'll find little things that you can tweak and 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 enhance and certain players that you can maybe bring into the team that are on the periphery at the moment. 
Um, and I, I always said this about Brendan Rodgers, but what he was so good at, and what I don't understand why managers don't do more, is when they come in, first thing he did is just pull the, mostly senior players, but the, all the lads. But what I would want to know straight away, like in a casual chat with the people, I want to know about the person, yeah, how he feels about the place, what's working, what isn't working. And I bet if you did that across the range of the squad, you'd get this, quite a lot of that this isn't working. Do you know what I mean? We don't like this about this club and, and we really like the way that this happens at this club and then okay we'll stick the, all brendan did was bin everything that was clearly not working yeah stuck with all the stuff that we liked and then he added his bit on top of all that and we fucking got promoted it's, it's a lot simple, of that. a lot of the stuff's away from but the it's tactics, not simple you know, because i think it? you touched on it because a, a lot of people managers come in and go <coughs> my ego is bigger than whatever this situation is and i'm this is how we're doing it and that don't make no sense because there's so many moving pieces in a football club. There's two ways I did it. I'll, I'll give you. I keep going back to Charlton, but it's, it's obviously recent and it's an example of. It got the scene. I knew the captain. I'd worked with him before, George Dobson. So I knew there was an in there relationship-wise. People looked up to him. So I got the leadership group together. I changed the captaincy on day one. Got rid of one of the guy that was a captain. Brought Dobbo as the captain. Four guys in the office after training, always with a cup of tea. That's straight away more relaxed, isn't it? Yeah. And then, okay, things like that. And then we just put a little thing in the dressing room and is said... Not, is that a northern thing, though? What? Do they do that down there, like have a cup of tea? I don't know. Oh, brew? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's, what, we, it's what, what happens up here, but I don't know if they do that down there. God, I've never, never I'm, seen yeah. Rio drink a cup of tea ever. No, it's a coffee guy, isn't it? Yeah, that's what yeah, I don't it's know. A, it's a bit more, we'll go for a coffee. It's £4.50 or something. Just, I take my, own, <laughs> take my own tea bags. I always have done. Every away game, I've got them in my bag in there. your leadership. Do. Take my own tea bag. <laughs> Sorry. He's got the macchiatos for the leadership group yeah. down there. You know what the other thing I did is just put a, little, a box in the dressing room and just a, it's fill some in. Don't want to see your name on it. And again, speak to the players in the meeting about why you're doing it because they want to know why the process is. Exactly what you just touched on. Really important. Wait, what? A suggestion box? Suggestion box. And there's loads of stuff. You know what most of it was about? The towels are crap. There's holes in the towel. They'd had problems last summer. I won't tell you the people that do the kit, but they'd had loads of issues. So they're using I mean, that season. Sound, you can Google around. Sounds ridiculous, right? Well, you can. You just Google. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were serious then for a minute. By the way, I've got loads of the gear. It's, it's sound. Just like... <laughs> I've got a funny story here. Just like these shoes. I don't know if you pronounce it. Arne or Arne. It's funny, this. So my assistant manager, one of my assistant managers at Charlton, he, he sent me a picture in the summer. Gone on holiday to Mexico. And he's got his three pairs of these shoes. He's Arne. He's all like... I mean, I don't, we've got four kids, like, I'd literally get a rucksack and I roll all my t-shirts up and my swim shorts and that's about a travelling me going out outfit to the airport, like, he's there, full 25 kilo, how does that work when you've got kids? But anyway, so where'd you get them shoes from? Oh, they sent them me. So I messaged, <laughs> I messaged the fellow on Instagram, DM'd him, picture of me and Eric Tanag coming out, there's a funny thing, when we play him in the cup, I walked out the touchline and he come over and hugged me and we were chatting and stuff like that and I'm, I'm like, look, I'm at Old Trafford. I know I'm out of work now, but this was when I was in work. And then they sent him another one of me in a press conference with a ni nice RNA hoodie. Still not sent me no gear. So I had to go there. I've just bought these. Hundred <laughs> 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 I've just saw them. Who runs the RNA gear, man? Get us fucking gear up. Maybe they could see what was Get coming. Maybe they could gear. see I was going to be out of work. And he I thought, will have a pair. Of, I still ain't had a coat off you from that. Let's speak to him. If, who are they? Seven layers. Dead nice coats. Yeah, I've seen him. But dead, nice I know, but he said you've only done like 40. Uh, I think it's only 40 size or, or 30 a size something like that. It's not Get a lot I wear a fucking thing like one of them Kanye West videos dro <laughs> drooping on the floor if it's free <laughs> give a fuck when it's coming <laughs> uh, where are we at is that, is that us yeah I think so uh, uh, any, uh, one more question anything else you, anything else that you want to drop in there yeah Right, Dino, you know, cheers for coming on, being our Appreciate first guest. Oh, top man. Loved it. Thanks Joel for me was on. technically the first guest. I'm not having that. Okay, first guest. Thanks for having me on. Who will uh cheers, cheers for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe. Good luck with a job hunt, Dino. Hopefully it's not too long. We'll see you in the next one.